Now I want to talk about the immune system. Uh, Dr. Masihi used to teach for immunology. We both had years of microbiology, biochemistry, and virology studies. We've made it our life's work to understand this stuff. And here, I'd like to go over some basic things about how the immune system functions so people have a good un understanding. The immune system is built by exposure to antigens, viruses, bacteria. When you're a little child crawling on the ground, putting stuff in your mouth, viruses and bacteria come in, you form an antigen antibody complex, you form IgG, IgM, this is how your immune system is built. You don't take a small child, put them in bubble wrap in a room and say, go have a healthy immune system. This is immunology, microbiology 101. This is not something, this is the basis of what we've known for years. Um, so what, what I'm seeing is when you take human beings and you say, go into your house, clean all your counters, Lysol them down, you're going to kill 99% of viruses and bacteria, wear a mask, don't go outside. What does that do to our immune system? Our immune system is used to touching. We share bacteria, staphylococcal, streptococcal bacteria, viruses. We develop an immune response daily to this stuff. When you take that away from me, my immune system drops. As I shelter in place, my immune system drops. You keep me there for months, it drops more. And now I'm at home, hand washing vigorously, washing the counters, worried about things that are indeed what I need to survive. Let's follow the science. This is immunology, folks. This is microbiology. This is what we've combined together. We have 40 years of experience in this. This is common sense immunology. So quarantining and social distancing is worse for us, you're saying? it decreases your immune system. You, you can't build an immune system by, if, if someone has a, a reduced immune system, you, you hide them away because they can't build an immune system. If you have a normal functioning immune system, you need interaction. The, the, when a child's in a womb, you're in this protected environment. When you come out, you have almost no immune system. You develop that through touching your mouth, touching your eyes, virus, bacteria, virus, bacteria, immune response, IgG, IgM. This is how you build a strong immune system. Think people are worrying too much? Of course they are, but that's, that's from media telling them to. I am telling them sheltering in place decreases your immune system. And then as we all come out of shelter in place with a lower immune system and start trading viruses and bacteria, what do you think is going to happen? Disease is going to spike. And then you've got disease spike amongst a hospital system with furloughed doctors and nurses. This is not the combination we want to set up for a healthy society. So it doesn't make any sense and to understand how diseases spread. For instance, nobody talks about the fact that coronavirus lives on plastics for three days and we're all sheltering in place. Where'd you get your water bottles from? Costco. Where'd you get that plastic shovel from? Home Depot. Those are fomites and carriers of disease. So you take your family sheltering in place that you think is safe and you're taking fomites with disease that they've shown that lasts three days. Are you really protecting yourself from COVID? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. And if I swabbed things in your home, I would likely find COVID-19. And so you think you're protected, but you've got fomites coming from, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's. And it's okay for us to be mingling in those situations, but we have to not go to work. It's okay for us to go to Costco, but not to church. Do, do you see the lack of consistency here? From a, from a microbiological, immunological standpoint, that doesn't make sense. If you're going to isolate people, you need to shut these all down because that's how the fomites are being transferred. When you go to Del Taco and you get a plastic bag or piece on your burrito from someone not wearing a mask who is just wiping their arm on your thing, do you think you're protected from COVID? When you wear gloves that transfer disease everywhere, those gloves have bacteria all over them. I'm wearing gloves, not helping you. As your mask that you're wearing for days, you touch the outside of it, COVID, and then touch your mouth. This doesn't make any sense. We wear masks in an acute setting to protect us. We're not wearing masks. Why is that? Because we understand microbiology, we understand immunology, and we want strong immune systems. I don't want to hide in my home, develop a weak immune system, and then come out and get disease. We have both been in the ER through swine flu and through bird flu. Did we shut down for those? Were, were they much less dangerous than COVID? Is the flu less dangerous than COVID. Let's look at the death rates. No, it's not. They're similar in prevalence and in death rate. So we are saying that our response now, now that we know the facts, it's time to get back to work. It's time to test people. 
But again, testing gives you a moment in time. Testing tells you, you we, the nasal swab says positive or negative. The blood vial, the tiger top or the finger stick gives you IgG, IgM. IgG being the long-term immun immunoglobulin we look at for immunity. But again, it's a moment in time. And when someone, what's interesting to me too is when someone dies in this country right now, they're not talking about the high blood pressure, the diabetes, the stroke. They say, did they die from COVID? Co there's, as you, I, we've been to hundreds of autopsies. You, you don't talk about one thing. You talk about comorbidities. Their vessels were narrowed. Their lungs were a smoker. COVID was part of it. It is not the reason they died, folks. It is one of many reasons. So to be so simplistic to say that's a COVID death because they have COVID, you know how many people die with pneumonia or people that die from flu? With flu, I should say. It's not from flu. Their, their lungs were compromised by COPD. They had a heart attack two years ago. They have a weakened body. We aren't pressured to test for flu. <clears throat> But ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting, when I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. Your vitamin D levels go down, you're not outside, you're not, you know, your mood goes down. When your mood goes down, you're more likely to get sick, you get depression. Going outside is healthy. I mean, why can't you go to the park and walk around, but you can go to Home Depot and nobody's wearing a mask? It just, it doesn't make sense. The inconsistencies and the incongruencies make no sense. That's the bottom line. So when Governor Newsom says restaurants after the stay-at-home order, you might see waiters and waitresses wearing gloves and masks and giving you disposable menus, you guys disagree with that? No, it's not, it's not, we don't disagree with that. I mean, I think you can look at it from two different ways. I think if you're healthy, and you don't have significant comorbid comorbidities, and you don't, you're not on, you're not, you're not immunodeficient, and you're not uh, elderly, you should be able to go out without any gloves and without a mask. I think if you are those things, you should either set shelter in place or wear a mask and gloves. I don't think everybody needs to wear a mask and gloves because it reduces your bacterial flora. It doesn't allow you to interact with society and your bacteria, flora, and your viruses, your friends that protect you from other diseases, end up going away and now you're more likely to get opportunistic infections, infections that are hoping you don't have your good bugs fighting for you, if that makes sense.